Okay, so we're going to go over the uh, waveform simulator. It's a snap-on uh, simulator for training for lab scopes. Uh, it's the snap-on, it's called a scope demo board. It's a model EESX306SP. It's powered by a 9-volt battery. Uh, it gives you basically uh, a lot of outputs to look at uh, on a car. Uh, obviously, we know that uh, you have two tasks when you use a lab scope. One is being able to learn how to use the lab scope, and secondly is being able to get to some of those circuits. And, and if you've ever done it before, you understand that it's very hard to do. Having a simulator helps you get over one of those tasks anyway, of being able to get to that point. So let's go over that right quick and, uh, and give you some sort of uh, uh, idea about what the simulator does and how it can help you as far as your training in your shop or training a technician to learn more about lab scopes. So we're going to go, we'll go back to the home screen and um, we're going to pick uh, this car. It's actually labeled on the simulator here already. It's a BMW 328i with a 3 liter engine. It's a 2012 model and it tells you on here plainly that it's an N52KP. So we'll leave it here. We're going to use it to, to stick our wires on so that we can actually look at those signals for you. All right, we're going to go under. First of all, one of the, the nicest things about the scope, the scope setup with Snap-on is the guided component test. You don't have to be an electrical engineer. You need to be able to fix an automobile. You need to be able to look for a particular signal. First, we're going to start out by looking for a, a crankshaft position sensor signal. And we're going to choose the appropriate vehicle that matches the simulator, just if you would choose the appropriate vehicle that were in your shop. We'll jump over to fuel injection and as you would know it there would be a crankshaft position sensor signal there my car doesn't start i may want to do a test and see am i receiving a signal so i'll do a signature test and on this white page it gives us an idea about what the signature test would look like snap-on includes some information about how to back probe what color the wires are for that particular vehicle that you've punched in it's pretty nice it shows you what the sensor signal would look like so we'll do the view meter the unit itself makes its electrical connection inside. We'll come right over here to what would appear to be a crankshaft position sensor signal on the engine. We'll ground our meter and we will uh, get rid of the rest of that help screen and we'll turn the unit on. And here what we have is the crankshaft position sensor signal running across here. Uh, we'll bring our trigger. Well, there's actually a trigger on here somewhere so if we'll see if we can't uh, um, slow down these pulses just a little bit um, maybe not maybe won't be able to we'll leave it there it's not the purpose of this um, you will need to learn trigger set points but we'll turn glitch capture on and at this point you can see many of the signals will start uh, disappearing I said glitch capture it's not it it's just a glitch switch that's made into the simulator to give a technician or a learning technician the ability to add a, a an erroneous signal or an erratic signal something to aid in training to, to go back. What we, we want to see with a digital storage oscilloscope is a nice painted picture. And obviously our wide pulse is walking across the screen. Uh, if we were going to look at that and we wanted that pulse to stay still and be able to uh, verify it against something else, we could trigger it with number one cylinder using the uh, ignition coil. We could trigger it with the a cam sensor signal. We could trigger it with any kind of rotational device on the engine that we could actually pick up a, a signal from. So we know that that's a proper signal. When we turn the glitch switch on, we start getting uh, more and more dropouts. You'll see uh, an erroneous or an erratic signal uh, along with our, that's probably a TDC notch in the crank sensor. So uh, don't be alarmed by some of those things you see. It's uniform. It's walking across the screen, but when we put the glitch switch in the off position, we go back to just that one TDC or, or alignment signal, most likely what that is. We can go back out at this point if you wanted to and you want to find another signature test for this particular car. Here it is. We can look at a cam uh, position sensor. We'll choose intake. We'll choose signature test again. We'll view the meter um, and uh, unit turns on internally. We're, we'll get rid of the help screen and We'll just change our meter leads over. You saw the signals look similar. Now we have a, a, a pulsed uh, camshaft position sensor. Uh, obviously you have wide pulses and narrow pulses. 
that will be an indication that the engineer is factoring in for this engine, obviously for uh, variable valve timing or fuel injection or, or whatever that they want it to be. But we're looking at a uniform signal. We can turn the glitch switch on, and now we start seeing uh, a lot of trash thrown in, more signals interjected into it. It has no uniformity to it, so we know right off the bat that there's something wrong. It's a good training aid for that. Um, we can look at, for instance, uh, more traditional things that we'd looked at with scopes. Uh, back when we first started using scopes 20 years ago, more traditionally we would be able to go look at something, uh, for instance, a throttle position sensor, but let's look at, uh, since this simulator has an accelerator pedal position sensor on it, let's go to throttle control and look for accelerator pedal position, and we'll just do a DC voltage test on it. Let's do that. View the meter. It turns on. Um, we'll, we'll get off of that cam sensor signal. We'll come right over here to the accelerator pedal position sensor. Let me get rid of my white help screen so you can see it. We have an adjustable knob on the simulator, so we could put the voltage wherever we wanted it. For testing purposes, we could say, you know, what is that? That's 2.6 volts at that particular point. We'll take it to a point. One of the things in training that we want to be able to look at is look at the signal, know that we're hooked up correctly, and trust our connections well enough to know that when we put a glitch in by the built-in glitch switch, look at what happens at about every two second or a two second rate, which is also outlined in your literature, that the voltage drops out. You may understand that if you were to have a, uh, a car that was, you were receiving an accelerator pedal position sensor error code for either the A switch or B switch or switch one or switch two, whichever it's a, uh, called by that particular manufacturer, you may be able to determine which one is dropping out by using a lab scope and a digital multimeter will never see this because it only averages. So this is why we use the scope. We're able to paint pictures and be able to see things that a digital multimeter will never see by averaging. I hope this helps you understand why you would want a simulator to train your technicians or to train students or to become more familiar with the signals. Uh, it's not cheating. Snap-on builds into this the component uh, guided component test menu. You could easily go back out if you didn't have a particular component test brought in for a particular vehicle. We could immediately go back out and choose a lab scope, just a regular scope meter. Choose the lab scope. We can, we're going to look at voltage, uh, at, at accelerator pedal position. We could look at low amps. We could set it up however we wanted to set it up. We'll turn glitch capture off. Um, but we're still looking at that same three volts. It's a little bit trashy. We can start changing our, our sweep times. Um, increase sweep times. Decrease sweep times. It doesn't matter. You can... Um, Still, you'll be able to pick up, if you wait long enough until the time frame rolls, we'll be able to pick up with the glitch switch on. Uh, there's there's a particular failure, it just showed up there. We could, uh, uh, obviously for however long we set up the sweep, it's, it's all, you can do it manually. So again, don't feel like you're cheating. We can look at a five second pattern and, uh, and we should be able to monitor some glitch uh, signals in a five second pattern. Uh, again, we're not triggering anything. Um, you can go back to your literature. You can set it up however you want to. The best part about the component, guided component test, is it gets you started. Many meters have an auto find function. Um, we use it all the time, an auto find function. But it's no, there's a glitch that just showed up. It, it, it amplifies the glitch and shows you just a little bit more what would happen. Again, we're looking and we can change the voltage. We'll increase the voltage all the way up to five volts, but we're still getting that two second glitch that is thrown in there. It's a good training aid. It gets you on point about where you need to be just in familiarizing yourself with using the scope. One of the biggest hindrances to using the scope is after you get it in your hands, you have to go over to an automobile and start back probing wires to use it. The simulator is a helpful training aid to get you more familiarized with your scope, which you have to do before you start trying to diagnose cars with it. I hope the video helps.